In 2016, bottled water outsold soda for the first time in US history. From one perspective, this is a great thing. People are choosing to drink water instead of soda. But from another perspective, it's brain dead that Americans are spending so much money on bottled water. It's one thing if you don't have access to clean drinking water, but this only applies to 0.6% of Americans, most of whom live in rural areas. Despite this, 96% of Americans continue to buy bottled water, resulting in the average American consuming 47 gallons of bottled water every year. And much of this consumption isn't on hiking trips or vacations. No, Americans literally buy cases of bottled water and drink it on a regular basis even at home instead of tap water. Families who do this spend on average, wait for it, $1,350 per year on bottled water. If you ask them why, they'll point to the taste or the filtration or the mineral content, but there's no evidence to back this up. In fact, a 2010 study found that the majority of participants could not even distinguish between bottled water and tap water. Also, bottled water is not healthier than tap water. If anything, bottled water is actually worse because 93% of bottled water tends to be contaminated by microplastics. And speaking of plastics, 86% of bottled water gets thrown away, resulting in 4 billion pounds of plastic trash and 2.5 million tons of carbon dioxide every single year. So objectively speaking, bottled water provides no health benefit for 99.4% of Americans and it's expensive financially and environmentally. But then why do people still buy bottled water? Well, the answer is brilliant marketing. You see, the soda industry isn't crying over the fact that people are moving away from soda because they're the ones who engineered this transition in the first place. Take a look at this lineup of bottled water. At first glance, it looks like a good assortment of different bottled water. But many of these brands are owned and or distributed by none other than Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Coca-Cola is involved with Dasani, Seal, and Smart Water, while Pepsi is involved with Aquafina, Schweppes, Life Water, Sobe, Sparkling O, and FAN. And if a bottled water brand isn't owned by these two, it's probably owned by Nestle, who owns 67 water brands around the world. So here's how these three behemoths brainwashed America into paying $16 billion for bottled water every single year. Taking a look back, bottled water is by no means a new invention. The first bottled water plant can be traced back to 1622 to the United Kingdom. From the very beginning, the premise of bottled water wasn't exactly scientifically sound. I mean, the first bottling plant in the UK was literally called the Holy Well Bottling Plant. As you may have guessed, the water promised to offer medicinal value especially when it came to healing and rejuvenation. Despite its shaky scientific roots, this idea quickly spread across Europe, and we saw bottling plants popping up next to every natural spring across the continent. This trend was simply accelerated by European colonization and imperialism. As these superpowers traveled to new areas, they were exposed to nature that was completely untampered with. And this simply got them more obsessed with the idea of getting their hands on the most natural water possible. But while this idea was quickly spreading across Europe, it took quite some time for it to catch on in America. In fact, the first commercially produced bottled water in America didn't come about till 1767, or nearly 150 years after the UK. Americans also didn't buy bottled water for some sort of miracle reason. Rather, they were just trying to get access to the cleanest drinking water they could, which was actually a serious concern. Back in Europe, however, bottling plants were simply leaning more and more into the marketing aspect. In 1783, for example, a Swiss clockmaker named Johann Jacob Schwepp would discover a way to carbonate water. Suddenly, bottling plants had another way to market water. Not only was their water holy, but now it was holy and sparkling. Surprisingly, this also took quite some time to catch on in America. It wasn't until 1809 or 26 years later that the first patent for carbonated water was filed in America. It seems that Americans were surprisingly grounded when it came to bottled water. Gimmicks like holy water and sparkling water didn't really push them to buy bottled water, but disease did, as was the case in the 1850s. Typhoid and cholera outbreaks were becoming increasingly common, which made bottled water highly appealing. 
and given that the supply of bottled water was somewhat limited, pricing went through the roof. A single pint of water cost as much as $1.75. Adjusting for inflation, we're looking at $63 for a pint of water. This was the first time that bottled water started carrying a certain prestige in America. Only the rich were able to spend $63 on bottled water, so bottled water naturally started being associated with a high social status. This was the case for quite some time, as in the next 50 years, but in 1905, the entire industry would be disrupted. This year, English doctors would convince authorities to implement public chlorination plants. A few years later in 1908, New Jersey would also implement water chlorination, and this marked the end of bottled water, at least for quite some time. The impact of water chlorination cannot be understated. Water chlorination is considered to be one of the 10 greatest public health achievements of the 20th century, and looking at the numbers, it's not surprising why. Water chlorination destroyed diseases like cholera and typhoid well before vaccines were developed. In 1900, there were 100 cases of typhoid fever per 100,000 people. By 1920, this number dropped to 33.8 cases per 100,000 people. And by 2006, this number dropped to just 0.1 cases per 100,000 people. And even amongst these cases, 75% of them occurred amongst international travelers. But not only was chlorination extremely effective, it was also extremely cheap. In fact, you can treat a million gallons of water with just a single dollar. This made it easy for municipalities across the US to implement water chlorination, and within no time, most Americans had access to clean drinking water from their taps. This quickly put an end to the popularity of bottled water. The reality was that bottled water was simply too expensive for the average American, and the only reason that it was so popular was because drinking tap water was an actual health risk. But now that tap water was safe to drink, people were quick to forget about bottled water. This isn't to say that bottling plants quit trying to sell bottled water though. From their perspective, the biggest obstacle was price. If they could just make bottled water cheap enough, maybe they could convince people to buy it once again. The biggest factor making bottled water so expensive wasn't actually the water itself, it was actually the bottling. Water was traditionally bottled in glass, so no wonder it was expensive. This was only made worse by the Great Depression as the average person had less money than ever. This was really the rock bottom for the water bottle industry, but things did slowly get better. In the 1940s, bottlers would start experimenting with the plastic bottles. These were indeed cheaper than glass bottles, but only marginally so. It wasn't until the 1950s and the introduction of high-density polyethylene that bottlers were really able to bring down the price, but this didn't help sales like they expected. While bottled water was indeed affordable, it was still significantly more expensive than tap water, which made it kind of a stupid purchase, especially when there was no objective benefit. This is very much the case to this day. In fact, bottled water is one of the most highly marked up items in the world. Producing bottled water only costs 5 cents on average, so if you're paying a dollar for it, you're looking at a 2,000% markup. For perspective, even movie theater popcorn is only marked up 1,300%. This is because somewhere along the line, bottlers finally realized that they simply couldn't compete against tap water in terms of price. Tap water was simply always going to be cheaper, and if bottlers couldn't convince customers based on price, they had to convince them based on perceived quality, and that's exactly what they would do. The extraordinary resurgence of bottled water can be traced back to a single marketing campaign from a company called Perrier. Perrier was already doing quite well back in France. They were very much the exception when it came to bottled water, as they were not only doing well, but they were exploding in popularity. In fact, between 1946 and 1952, Perrier was able to grow their sales 15x from 10 million bottles per year to 150 million bottles per year. What made their popularity even more perplexing was that they were seemingly doing everything wrong. They had stuck to glass bottles and they were unapologetically expensive at over $2 per bottle. But the truth was that this was their secret. Perrier marketed themselves as the premium water meant for premium customers. And in 1977, Perrier would bring this same marketing strategy to America. They would spend $5 million advertising Perrier as Earth's first soft drink. 
They claimed that Perrier was more quenching, more refreshing, and most importantly, more natural. This tapped into our natural desire to live longer and healthier and find the oh-so-elusive fountain of youth. Perrier would pair this marketing with a brilliant positioning. They would place their water in the most elite restaurants and hotels in New York and Los Angeles. This solidified the idea that the rich were living longer and better due to the water they were drinking. This completely redefined how Americans perceived bottled water. They started to believe that bottled water was indeed better than tap water, but it wasn't quite enough to get the average Joe to switch over. You see, Americans were addicted to something else, soda. But over time, awareness about just how unhealthy soda really is started to spread, and the people would start cutting back in the late 1990s. Pepsi and Coca-Cola were witnessing this stagnation firsthand as they saw their empires slowly melt away. But that didn't last for long as both of these guys would swiftly pivot to water. These guys already had decades of experience advertising sugar water. All they had to do now was market the water without the sugar. Perrier had already created a premium image around a bottled water, so all Pepsi and Coca-Cola had to do was double down. Pepsi would launch Aquafina, and Coca-Cola would launch Dasani, and they would both strategically price bottled water to be more expensive than soda. Why was water more expensive than soda? Well, obviously because it was healthier. These two also had connections with basically every retailer on the planet, so getting their miracle water into stores was no problem at all. Once their product was on shelves and their commercials about youth and nature were airing, all they had to do was wait. During the first eight years of the 2000s, bottled water would rocket in sales while soda stagnated. During the next eight years, bottled water continued to rocket while soda actually declined, leading us to where we are today. In the end, the only reason that bottled water is so popular today is because of a brilliant pivot from Pepsi and Coca-Cola. They saw that their core market was declining due to health concerns, so they created new brands centered on health. The reality though is that bottled water has nothing to do with health. In fact, bottled water is less heavily regulated than tap water. The FDA does not require bottlers to disclose water sources, treatment processes, or even containment reports. Municipalities, on the other hand, are required to send you this information on an annual basis, though of course, no one looks at these, but at least they're there. This means that there's usually a lot more variation regarding cleanliness when it comes to bottled water. One study found that top water is pretty consistent, generally having between 0.2 to 2.7 bacterial colonies per milliliter. Bottled water, on the other hand, had anywhere between 0.01 to 4,900 colonies per milliliter. In fact, six of the tested brands had 1,500 to 4,900 colonies per milliliter. So the idea that bottled water is healthier or cleaner is just a brilliantly constructed facade, and all the extra money you're spending on bottled water is just going to the pockets of our favorite bottlers, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And that's how America got brainwashed into drinking bottled water. Do you drink tap water or bottled water? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you agree that bottled water is overhyped. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community, suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.